All right, so this is gonna be a short video on translation initiation. This is the first step of translation. And uh, translation, of course, is the process by which mRNA is transcoded into protein. Now, this is specifically for translation in eukaryotic organisms, and we're gonna talk about the biochemistry behind it, how the ribosome works, how the ribosome attaches, and how some initiation factors help with the initiation of translation. So let's begin. We're going to jump right into the mechanism of translation initiation. Okay, so this is the general mechanism of translation initiation. We start with the small unit of the ribosome, the 40S subunit. Now, normally we see this subunit bound to a larger 60S subunit. In this case, the ribose subunits are kept separate by initiation factor 3. This is important for initiating translation. We want to keep the 40S subunit separate until we are bound to the mRNA and ready to start encoding. The next step is the delivery of the first tRNA, which of course is carrying the first amino acid, always methionine. Initiation factor 2 delivers this tRNA directly to the P site of the ribosome, and initiation factor 2 is bound to a GTP molecule, which becomes important when it comes to dissociating this initiation factor. Next, we have initiation factor 4 come in and guide the entire complex to the mRNA. This entire complex is called the pre-initiation complex. Now, the pre-initiation complex doesn't bind directly to the start codon. It doesn't bind to the first AUG. It needs to scan the mRNA back and forth looking for that AUG. And once it finally finds it, the GTP attached to that transcription factor can be dissociated. Excuse me, to that elongate to that initiation factor can be dissociated. So, we have the entire pre-initiation complex bind to the mRNA non-specifically. It kind of looks back and forth looking for that start codon. Once it finds it, GTP can be hydrolyzed and initiation factor two can leave. Initiation factor three is the next to leave. And of course, that was keeping the subunit separate. So the large 60S subunit comes in to bind. We're now ready for elongation to begin. Elongation factor one, alpha, comes in with the second tRNA and brings it directly to the A site. This is an elongation factor that's carrying the second tRNA. And of course, a ribozyme up here called peptidyl transferase can create peptide bonds between the two tRNAs and create a large growing polypeptide chain. This last step is repeated as more elongation factors continue to bring in the subsequent tRNAs to continue growing the polypeptide chain. Let's go over this general mechanism one more time. We can be uh, a, little, a little less detailed this time. The 40S ribosome starts alone, separated from the 60S large subunit by initiation factor 3. The next initiation factor, initiation factor 2, comes in bound to GTP and tRNA, binding the first amino acid, methionine. This whole complex, called the pre-initiation complex, is then guided to the mRNA by initiation factor 4. Now this pre-initiation complex does not bind to the, to the first AUG, to the first start codon. It actually binds non-specifically, and it begins to scan the mRNA looking for that first start codon. Once that first AUG is found, EIF2 can dissociate by hydrolysis of that GTP. Initiation factor 3 is the next to dissociate, which of course means that the large subunit of the ribosome can now join the complex. We're now ready for translation to begin. We're ready for elongation. The next tRNA is brought in by elongation factor 1 alpha, which brings it directly to the A site. There's, it's not shown here, but there's a ribozyme called peptidyl transferase that catalyzes peptide bond formation up here and begins to synthesize a growing polypeptide chain. This last step with elongation factor 1 alpha is repeated as the next subsequent tRNAs are brought in and the polypeptide chain up here continues to grow as the entire ribosome complex synthesizes the mRNA transcript.
We have here a quick summary showing a few key points, uh, kind of explaining the acronyms that I used in this, in this short mechanism. EIF stands for eukaryotic initiation factor. These are, of course, proteins. And as a quick summary, the role of initiation factor 2 was to keep the two ribosomal subunits separate until binding was complete. Initiation factor 2, excuse me, that was initiation factor 3. Initiation factor 2 delivered the first amino acid bound to tRNA. This was delivered directly to the P site. Elon, or eukaryotic initiation factor 4 recruited the entire complex to the mRNA. Once we were ready for elongation to begin, elongation factor 1 alpha brought the second tRNA to the A site, and elongation factor 1 alpha also brings all subsequent tRNAs to the A site to continue growing that polypeptide chain. And one final point is that GTP supplies all energy needed for translation. Um, this is different from some other cellular processes that, that use ATP, but translation initiation uses GTP.